There you go. It's your boat. How you doing? We got as much stuff as I do. Uh, I got a little more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we don't have to bring all of it. I, it's oh, man. prioritized. That's all good. <laughs> Let's go get your boat. What's up, man? Good to see ya. Good to see you too. Ah, yeah. yeah. That's a mile. <laughs> There's our ship. That's a ship we've been <laughs> yeah. we've been there she watching, is. staring on AIS for the past two months. So they offloaded our boat already yesterday. It's on a big flat rack you'll see in a second here. So it's on land and Scott and I are gonna go over and cut off all the shrink wrap and get it prepped and in an hour or two, they're gonna drop it in the water and we're gonna motor it away. So you guys, if you've been watching the channel, you've seen Scott before. So it's just about one year ago, Sierra and I helped Scott commission another boat right up in Stewart to see when 1260 and then we delivered it up to Brunswick. Scott has been commissioning sea winds and corsairs for a few years now he's going to give us a hand commissioning our boat but first we have to get it in the water and get it up north we're actually going right to uh like north palm beach west palm beach uh to commission it and then we'll like put the mast together and the furler and then put the mast on the boat and do all the sails what else we have to do well i think what we'll end up doing is we're gonna try to get in and out of the yard really quick so we're gonna do the mast stab and the furler uh this new boat we don't have to worry about a solar arch or anything like that or, or the uh, bridles for a bowsprit so ultimately once we get the mast stabbed i say we just start going underway up the icw and at that time, if the winds are in our favor, come to the north, we can start putting sails up and everything. Yeah. While we're underway. So by the time we hit port, boop. There we go. And then we'll head up to Stewart for a week or so and just get everything else, all the little stuff we got to get done. Load all your stuff done. on board. Yeah, load our personal stuff. <laughs> Sierra will be making a little nest. Yeah, water maker to put on too, don't you? Oh, it's not. We'll do that in a month or two. Uh, yeah. Here's uh, our buddy. There it is. Holy crap, man. I was so freaking excited. A little bit nervous right now, actually. So pumped. Can't wait to step foot on this thing. Oh yeah. Now when we when we test these, one of us will fire the engine and one of us is gonna be checking the rotations. Okay. For forward and reverse, make sure that the transmissions were properly installed. All right. Going in. <laughs> yeah, what's ready? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, yeah, Woo. there she is. Keith. There you go. It's your boat. All right, here we go. Smells like a new boat. <laughs> Holy smokes, wow. man. This is something, huh? This is awesome. All right, let's get to it. Well, I'll get started. 
This is crazy. All right, so this isn't typical. We got special permission to do the commissioning with Scott because of all our experience, because we've done a commissioning with Scott before. Mostly because we wanted to give you guys an inside perspective of what exactly goes into commissioning a boat like this. So first thing we gotta do is cut off all this shrink wrap and get the boat ready to drop in the water. So we're gonna check the engines, check the batteries, check the through holes, and just make sure it's gonna float and that the engines are gonna start and we'll be able to motor out of here. Let's get to work. All the shrink wrap off basically all the major stuff at least all the big stuff lots of little pieces left little protective pieces we're gonna get these uh straps off and then we're gonna check the engine fluids and start batteries hook them up and we already turned the house batteries on we have like 85 percent charge in them so that's all good oh it looks good well so very simple uh there's a bus fuse that's on both the batteries so we just want to go ahead and connect both the port and the starboard battery and then of course zip tie the the guards make sure that those are all secure the start uh, batteries right here. yep these are both start batteries now those are secure we can uh go about testing so first we're gonna do is check fluids real quick all right fill level is good there we go. So, yep, coolant's, or uh, not coolant, uh, oil's good uh, in the sail drive. Seen fuel uh, in the uh, ray core. Everything checks. Uh, Seacock is open. Seacock is open. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Port is on. Starboard's on. All right, just starting the engines for the first time, just making sure they turn on. I already did the port, about to do the starboard. Just real quick so we don't burn up the water pump. Right away. Okay, boy. We're okay. Stop. We're Off. Just like a few seconds. Sure, uh, we got some water pumping. Yeah, we're good. There we go, swings are off. All right, it looks like it's drifting off now. Should be good. Uh, it's still caught on that side. Just pause. We, we might be good now. Go ahead, back up a little. That's good right there. Hold it for a sec. Yeah, you're good now. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. All right, we're on our way. We were just waiting around for a while and then that happened so fast. All of a sudden, crane is over us. They're starting to lift up. We're going. We were pretty much ready, except they didn't really have a lot of cameras ready, which I wanted to have. But we're in the water. We're underway. Port is right there behind me. Scott's getting some dock lines and fenders right now, and we're just heading to the fuel dock right across from here. It says we have plenty of fuel, but we just want to top off and just make sure that gauge is accurate. Also going to top off with fresh water just so that we can kind of clean the boat a little bit um, while we're underway here. Five or six years ago, we were going down this very same channel on Adrenaline, our first sailing catamaran, right here in the same exact spot. And now, 
We're going by in a brand new boat. We just fueled up, got a little bit of water, and we're underway. We're taking the intracoastal. We thought about taking the ocean, but unfortunately we have a like 10 to 15 knot north breeze with like a three to four foot swell. And that against the Gulf Stream is gonna be pretty dang uncomfortable. And we have just a bunch of loose stuff all around the boat. We don't really want to damage anything or loose stuff going flying all over the place. So we'll wait until we're fully commissioned and rigged and everything before we go out in the ocean. We're almost to the boatyard. We're gonna get there just after dark. While underway, we just did a whole bunch of taking all the bubble wrap and tape and padding off like the stanchions and just all over the handrails, all over that kind of stuff. Engines have been running amazing. No issues, knock on wood, we're almost there. I've been peeking in every single little cupboard and cabinet and in the bilges and just exploring this whole entire boat. So we'll give you guys a full on tour, don't worry. But tomorrow, we have to get to commissioning. That's gonna be the goal for the next few days, get this thing commissioned, get the mast on, get the sails on, get the rigging tuned, and uh, yeah, check out this, this bridge. All right, we're almost there. We'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, it's mast building day today, all day. Hopefully we finish, which I think we will and we're gonna put the mast on the boat with the crane tomorrow. So Sierra couldn't come yesterday because she had a doctor's appointment that she had scheduled for months. It's really hard when we're always traveling and we don't have like primary care doctor to get into a specialist, so she had to go to the ENT because she always has ear problems. So she had to go to the doctor, she couldn't cancel it. She was so bummed, but we'll get her reaction today when she sees the boat for the very first time. It's gonna be, it's gonna be funny. All right, let's unpack this stuff. Excited to see it for the first time? I haven't stepped foot on her yet. I'm excited. I'm scared. <laughs> Go for it, let's see it. Oh my gosh, she's so big. Oh my goodness, these are so nice. I think you reach the super I like this. This is new. She's so pretty. Oh my goodness, this is our home? Yup. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Shoes are coming off. So this is all new. Well, there was a cabinet here. Yeah, but it wasn't this big. It didn't have this. Like that wasn't there. And this wasn't really there. Cool. And this wasn't here. Nice. I 
like that built in shelving. Yeah. And this built in shelving, that's super nice. All right, we got all of the protective bubble wrap and everything off the shiny, shiny mask. How's the mask look and what's the next step, Scott? The mask looks good. I was told uh, by Mike Reese that it's very similar to what the 1260, the 42-foot C1 catamaran. So, I like it. I like the way you set it up. Uh, first off, you have the uh, the jib halyard that's gonna go over to the four stay. You have a separate screecher halyard and then followed up with a spinnaker halyard. When people are putting their boats together, it's very important to make sure that you request to have both or you may just end up with a universal halyard that you would use for the spinnaker as well as the screecher. You have one for each. Everything on the head looks fine. A couple additional notches here. Shouldn't be too big of a deal as the mast is gonna drain over off of the plate, but there is a snorkel that is now mounted uh, right at the center plate, right into the center of the, uh, the mast plate. We're gonna have to just make sure that that's not gonna cause any, well, we'll figure out how the plate drains here in a little bit. Looks like there's just some tape residue. Items like this, it's best that we clean this up before we put the mast up. Now it's gonna be a whole day just trying to get up there and scrub it. I think it's called Flitz, F-L-I-T-Z. It's a, it's a great product to use for aluminum cleaning and polishing. I like to always check the rail as well. Now a lot of people get a little nervous about this rail being loose, but the reality is it's actually sitting through a track that's already meant for the slugs. Wire connections look good. Uh, there's going to be two conduit tubes. One's going to go up to the spreader and the other one's going to go all the way leading up to the mast. Now with my services I provide a Dyneema messenger line that's going to go all the way up to the head of the mast and another one over to the spreaders. That way for any modifications later in the future or anything you need to add they'll already be there. Sleeve looks good. Uh, I'm not feeling any firms or anything that's going to give us any trouble while we're sliding it in. So you got yourself a really nice mast. Now this right here by the way, are you curious what this is? For the self-tacking jib? No. No, it is not. Uh, what this is actually for is uh, you have a, um, what is this? Is this a fork? It sure is. All right, so you have a two-speed 40 self-tailing uh, Lumar winch. When you're tightening the tension that's going to go over to the jib halyard, obviously you can't go from the clutch right over to the winch, so this is your turning block. Oh, that brings over the winch. So as you're cranking that in and getting it set, that's the guy you're going to use for when you're creating the tension. What's also kind of cool is it also runs quite in parallel with the uh, speaker halyard as well as what appears to be the spinnaker halyard. Pretty sure that is. We'll find out here shortly. Yeah, man, you're going to be able to control the sails right over at the at the mast instead of going all the way to the aft. Single-handing operation is awesome. I really like the way this has been put together. It reminds me a lot of the 1190 Sport, how they would put it more performance-oriented, but with a 1260 size. So let's get her together. All right. So as my recommendation was, I also offer, for later commissioning, production wasn't offering it, is the opportunity to add a tricolor anchor light onto the head of the mast. The reason being is, for a lot of these folks who want to do some real long range cruising or even participate in events like the ARC, they're going to require this. And not only is it a great sense of redundancy, but it gives a, a second ability for people to be able to see you and know where your direction is. Weems and Platt, uh, when you contacted them, they recommended this model, the LX collection. Now, what's great about this is it also has a selection, a uh, selector switch. So this will allow you to be able to go to tricolor, to anchor, or to even strobe during uh, times of distress. It's quite an easy installation as well. Uh, it does require us to run an additional wire with a third lead. If the folks want to have the strobe function, we can certainly use the existing wire. So this could also be upgraded on the head of the mast for already existing boats but you will will not have the strobe function. You'll have tricolor or the anchor option. Uh, as you can see, it mounts pretty well right onto the existing head. Uh, that's it. Well, we're gonna, we already ran electrical, so now we're running uh, all the halyards. My philosophy when it comes to halyards is to start with the highest and work your way down. I keep the mass separated, of course, in lieu of tying everything off and pulling. So that way we can verify the runs and make sure that we don't have any crossings. Uh, after we have that complete, then we will bring the lower and the top together. We're almost there. So what I want to make sure is that there isn't going to be any twist at all between the halyards. And I'm just about to begin building the furling system. So there's the four stay. And then we got all the four stay barrels that we're going to put it all together right now. And the drum down here will go on the other end. We're making progress, people, making progress.
All right, we're pulling the mass, the two mass pieces together, and then we're just making sure that the conduit, the electrical conduit inside the mast is lining up perfectly. There's a male and a female end, and we just gotta make sure they go in smoothly. And everything else, just making sure no lines or wires are getting jammed up in there or anything. So Scott is pulling together and I am uh, doing this. Uh, there we go. All right, you're clear now, fully clear. Ready? Yeah. It's lined up? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here's where the pressure hits. All right. Yeah, that's perfect. Excellent. It went in smooth. Great work. The conduit went in smoothly, so that's a big thing. Now we're just going to tension up on the lines and make sure that no lines get like jammed anywhere as these two pieces are coming together. So that's what Scott's doing right now. Scott. Uh, we're just tightening up the, uh, the inner and outer diamond. Got the pre-band pretty well set. Now we're going to make sure that the halyards are all ran properly. They're not going underneath the, give me, I'm a little tired. <laughs> They're going underneath the shrouds. So once we stab, there's really no reason why we're going to have to go back up the mast to clean anything up. Then after that, it's a little bit of the tedious details, reinspecting everything, making sure that the the bend came in properly and there hasn't been any fatigue. Anything has changed about the shape or the uh, angle of the mass. So this is, uh, this is a little bit more the piano tuning, I guess you would say, where you just really want to make sure that all the details are done right the first. It's been a long day. It has been a long day. I, I think we're up on 12 hours almost. <laughs> yeah, but uh, look how much we got done. Yeah, I'd say we have about one more hour of work and then we'll have it ready for staffing tomorrow the Windex on, got the antenna on. We'll put this Windex on tomorrow so that we don't accidentally break it. And Sierra and Scott just put the uh, force day on with the furler. So it was a long day today, but we are ready to hoist. Get the mast on. We are about to put the mast on the boat for the first time and I'm a little nervous because we're touring it with this thing <laughs> and the mast is going to go flip up this way and then we're going to move it over and then it's going to go in and then we got to attach all everything else so whoo she's going to be dangling in the air for a little bit and whoo I'm so excited it's like a giant relief like we don't have to we don't have to worry about if it's going to be I had nightmares about it being damaged and shipping like for years like the container ships falling on top of it and squishing the boat the whole boat catching on fire on its way over here so the fact that it arrived and it is in good condition like whew, is so much relief for me but now this is the next like big scary step getting the mast from here to there without it falling on the boat
<laughs> they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. That it was really scary, but the scariest part is over. Can you hand me this other lower, Sierra? When's the next time you want to see a boat girl? <laughs> uh, never. However, we gotta do like a 50 hour like sail drive check, so it'll be in a couple weeks. <laughs> but after that, no more. We got the mast up and the rigging's all secure. We're gonna have to tighten the rigging a little bit. We're gonna get the boom on and the mainsail on, which because they did some a bunch of testing of this boat in Vietnam, they already have the mainsail on the boom. They have the stack pack on. So we're gonna get all that on the mast and then we'll, at some point we'll get the jib on and then we'll start messing with like the screecher and that, that stuff. And then probably sail a little or do the best we can tuning the rig back and forth between having the sails up and tacking and tightening on the lee side and following whatever Scott says. We're a little bit under a time crunch in our spot right here at the moment because a barge has to get in here in like a half hour. So we're just doing the best we can for right now and then we'll get out of here. All right, we're underway. Go in the ocean, or we just take the intercoastal and just well, yeah, do it underway or whatever. I didn't, I didn't know what your decision was about the ICW or the ocean. I'm still, I'm still like whatever 50 50. If we go in the ocean, we have to stop and anchor for an hour and uh, just get everything secure, get the rig tight, get the boom on. Also, want to check the weather, probably make sure they're not gonna get any crazy thunderstorms this afternoon. One second. We're looking to see what our weather's looking like today to see if it's a smart idea to go in the ocean for the first time when we just put the mast on about five minutes ago. <laughs> I don't know, there's like a bunch of stuff on the west coast. I don't know if it's going to make it over land, but just little dots. So if we, if we, even if we drop the hook right here and just spend an hour rigging, it'll still be, and then take the ocean, it'll still be faster than taking the ICW. A little yeah. bit nicer too. It looks pretty calm. Hopefully we don't get any crazy thunderstorms, but it is faster. And then we have a chance of seeing a fish, catching a fish, seeing fish, whatever. And jumping in the ocean. All right, we just dropped the hook. We're just gonna spend an hour getting all the rigging done. Standing rigging tightened, running rigging, run, boom on, and then we'll uh, head out in the ocean, I think. There you go. Good, good, good. Big stuff is moving quick now. So out of all the stuff we've taken out of packages during this whole commissioning process, this is something I'm most excited about, the bowsprit. Sierra! Sierra! Steven's on your pocket? Steven. <laughs> 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 First try. So we got some of the some of the running rig and run. Right now with this door line, we could open up our tripod door and open up the whole cabin. Yeah, we could, yeah.
we got the mainsail all the way up. Because they did all that testing already in Vietnam, they left all the reef lines ran through the sail and everything, so that made it a little bit easier for us. And yeah, everything's looking really good. That was pretty simple. Sail's looking really good. Can't wait to get sailing this thing. Unless you want to go fast. I don't care. Keep going. Be a uh, BNG uh, connection right there, where you'll just, um, well, right when you get it in the bolson chair, just take that. And you're going to want to set it in place and twist it so it's nice and firm. Next thing you will do is the transducer uh, plate is right at the fore of the mast. These two are going to go into the very back of the plate, and you're going to push down, and this will click and close. Okay, so connect that and then con and then put that on. Uh -huh. I'm going to tune the mast right now then, okay. uh, and get it really tight so you won't sway around when you're up there. Okay. Okay. I'm down. Right on. Should have told her to bring your phone. No, now it's uh, seven knots up there. Does it feel like seven knots of wind? Hey, Sierra, how fast do you think the wind's going right now? I heard you say seven to ten, so I don't want to cheat. How did you hear me? <laughs> you ready to come down? Yeah. You don't want the express? <laughs> Next time I gotta bring my phone. Yeah, I know. I'm back, did you miss me? <laughs> starting to raise some afternoon Florida thunderstorms right now and we have to get up north to the marina we have reserved so we're gonna cruise the big blue just waiting for us calling our name first time in the ocean baby Ooh. Your first launch point? We just, yes, yeah, we ever owned, yeah, the last charter we went on, it had it, and it was so spoiled. I don't know how fast we're going, but we're we're cruising. It's silent. The engines are off. It's calm. It's peaceful. There's turtles. It's a good first sail, that's for sure. Ah, on our own boat. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. It's so nice. It's been a while since we've been out sailing. We have a home again. <laughs> a home that floats and moves. <laughs> It feels good. It feels good. Now I got to get the rest of our stuff moved in, clean it again, get all of our family and friends on it, and hightail it out of here to be gone in just a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> and get the screecher on too. Have to be north of the line for insurance, and we're coming close to our ticking clock. More or less comfortable than you thought. Oh, so comfortable. I loved every single second on mountain mist, but you know, like no stabilizer. So any sideways stuff, we'd be boom, boom, boom. And we're just flat as flat can be. This maiden voyage has been almost four years in the making. Four years of dreaming what it would be like, feel like. Four years of worrying about when we're going to be sailing full time again. 
what we're going to film, if anything bad will happen in shipping, and if anything will be wrong with the boat when it finally gets here. For the first time in years, I have no worries. And better yet, no boat work. We have a home again, and now we are dreaming of where we will go, what we will see, the people we will meet, and the memories we will make. And it all starts here, with a quick reminder to never get too comfortable, because when you do, Mother Nature always has other plans. Not really in time, but in time to not break anything. Okay, well we all got a nice little shower, us and the boat. So we put the sails down, it got super windy. When we were raising them, I didn't take into account that the sails had filled with water and I was out there when we were putting them up and I just got a very nice thick high pressure shower <laughs> but if we're back to sailing and we're moving we're passing jupiter right now right there's the lighthouse and probably got 15 miles to go making our way to stewart yeah, like boat felt just rock solid and ergonomically just getting around the boat to get to things was nice like no unnecessary obstacles which really good and we got that out of the way all that chaos for a few minutes out of the way, now it's no big deal. One of the hardest parts of waiting so long for this boat was being in limbo and not knowing when we could really move on with our lives in the way that we really wanted. We did a good job of taking on projects and adventures that interested us, but through that time I would find myself wondering if we were on the right path. Were we doing the right thing with these temporary endeavors while we just wait for a boat to be built? Do we even truly want to be living and sailing full time while documenting our experiences for the internet or should we be thinking about buying a house and getting more conventional secure jobs instead? So we've got another squall right in front of us. We would have had to jive right now anyway, but instead of jiving, we're just gonna put the sails away, turn, we're probably gonna go right into that squall and right into the inlet though. That's ultimately, that's what we have to do is go into the inlet, which is right here. But now that we finally have our feet on the decks, there's wind in the sails and we are smelling the fresh ocean breeze. This is without a doubt, absolutely where we belong and what we should be doing. The future of us aboard this boat are now in our control, and we can't help but smile at the prospects of continuing to turn our dreams into realities. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. This Woo! is my alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Here, use your camera. All right. <laughs> How do you think she did, ma'am? Good. She felt good? Yeah. All felt right. really good. Yeah. Handles some decent wind really well. Are you so happy? I'm happy. We're here for a couple days. We can maybe sleep in five more minutes tomorrow than we have the past week. <laughs> maybe four. <laughs> a lot to do. 
Where do you want people to find connect with you, Scott? Well, my website is the easiest. It's uh, www.beyondthesale.com. There's links to all the YouTube videos that I've been included on with two of us in the past. Yeah, you can get a bit, bit better of an idea. And I'd always love to chat with new folks when they're getting ready for their commissioning process. Uh, not only do I do the commissioning, which is normally a start to finish, unload, detailing, all the way to a turnkey. But I also offer top of the line safety packages, dings and outboards as well, so to set you up with the right equipment for the locations that you're going to be cruising. Cool, man. Well, we'll have that link in the description, as hey, always. Good. Yep. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be in touch. And uh, yeah. Bye, Scott. Right, travel, Scott. Thank, thank you. you.